Church, welcome to another fireside chat. Uh, less fire, more distance <laughs> between us. True. We're obeying our, our civic leaders because that's who we are, but uh, we still uh, think this is worthwhile to, to get together and talk about some different issues and stuff. And So we're going to do um, just a few little topics. And first and foremost, uh, Mike Lindell of My Pillow Fame. To be honest, I am over his commercials. He way over advertises, <laughs> in my opinion. But uh, with that said, he has quite a, quite a uh, God-centering or Christ-centering uh, testimony that, that is, is online to, to watch and know. So he's, he's come from a really uh, rough past, kind of a, a crazy background, and he is now um, definitely following the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, or this week, excuse me, he hit uh, National Payday in regards mm -hmm. to his uh, giving God glory and sharing about kind of like, well, here, take a peek at the big clip. Here it is. Now I wrote something off the cuff if I can read this. Okay. <laughs> God gave us grace on November 8, 2016 to change the course we were on. God had been taken out of our schools and lives. A nation had turned its back on God. And I encourage you to use this time at home to get to home to get back in the word, read our Bibles and spend time with our families. Our president gave us so much hope where just a few short months ago we had the best economy, the lowest unemployment, and wages going up. It was amazing. With our great president, vice president, and this administration and all the great people in this country praying daily, we will get through this and get back to a place that's stronger and safer than ever. I heard about him saying this on a radio program, and that was just kind of brought to tears. It was. It was so encouraging that uh, that he had said this, and, and so God glorifying. And uh, it seemed to me what I kind of heard was Second uh, Chronicles seven fourteen. Mm -hmm. What what do you think that's what he was alluding to? Yeah, I think there there's no doubt that I've been hearing this from a variety of places. It comes around every so often, even going back to nine eleven, um, the passage where God is speaking to Solomon, and says, you know, if I heard your prayer. And I'm, if I send judgment on you and on the people, but if you repent and you turn and you, um, you know, turn from your wicked ways, I will heal your land and you know take away all these judgments. But you know, I'm not trying to be a downer on anything, but that's very much taken out of context. Um, in fact, even in our current situation, if you take Second Chronicles 7, 12 through 14, um, we would be admitting or declaring that God has sent the COVID-19 to punish everybody. But, to um, punish his people. To punish his people specifically. Yeah. So that that the context of Second Chronicles is for Israel in the land at a specific time, and yes, it is true. In there's principles in the New Testament that certainly, if people repent, then God will offer salvation and blessing uh, through Jesus Christ for sure. But to rip out a promise that was given specifically in a context and try to force it in today's um, environment, you know, the guy from My Pillow. I don't look to him as a theologian, no. <laughs> you know, or or the president. No president has ever been a theologian and in, in, in the chief executive theologian. So no matter what people might say, I think all of us have responsibility to look at scripture in context as we talk yeah. a lot. Yeah, exactly. And then answer real quickly: Why isn't God punishing the church and our believers? Why 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 won't we fall under punishment? Well, it's interesting that uh, in 1 Peter 4, 17, it does say that judgment begins at the house of God. But even th the context there, it only means that um, to whom much is given, much is required. You know, the church has been given yeah. the word, you know, and yeah. so we have a lot of responsibility with that. But God, I've heard many people say that, you know, this is a judgment of God or whatever. And unless you are a direct prophet, which I don't believe that's the case, um, equal to the Old Testament or New Testament prophets, um, I don't believe that's the case. Anybody cannot say that with absolute certainty. So we live in a fallen world. I mean, women having birth pains is living in a fallen world. That hasn't been removed. I yep. mean, yep. earthquakes are happening. You the know, curse of the land. It's the curse. And yeah. so, no, no, to say that this is a judgment of God um, is is true in one sense that we live in a fallen world that's cursed from the beginning of Genesis 3 on. So, but that, that includes the earthquakes, um, famine, fires. We just live in a fallen world. Yeah. But to say this is specifically for some reason, however, God does use all things yeah. 
for I his good. This is great opportunity. It's a great I wish opportunity. I could have face-to-face -face yep. evangelistic encounters all over the place. Yep. But uh, I'm doing. We're doing our best online and and yep. uh, and reaching out with our phones and yeah. stuff. But yeah, to actually have the face-on-face -face is is taken away at this time. Yep. So.